Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Yeah, and would, be honest. Yeah, I'd probably do this. I would say do this together. Use two different color pens and just put down, you know, what each of your responses mm-hmm. are and write them down. So that way, one, it'll make the, the other partner aware of what your partner's insecurities are. So because maybe you didn't even know. Have you ever thought, how did I manage to lose myself? Being a mom is so hard, especially when we're feeling stressed and disconnected. We exhaust ourselves trying to create this perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your marriage and your kids without the stress perfectionism brings. I am going to teach you how to identify who you are outside of all of the roles you play. Hi, I'm Veronica Cisneros. I'm a wife, mother of three, and a licensed marriage and family therapist. I am on a mission to teach women just like you how to become empowered and unapologetic. Welcome to our girl gang. Hey ladies, welcome to Empowered and Unapologetic. I'm your host, Veronica Cisneros. So as you know, we've been going episode by episode these last, these last five episodes. This is the fifth one. And we've been covering a free workbook that I created just for you. Right now, while we're in this pandemic, a lot of marriages have been impacted and the the percentage for divorce has increased substantially. So this is my free gift to you. You can go ahead and get this free gift at www.empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash episode 51. Ladies, 
I want you to go ahead and get this workbook and I want you to do it either on your own or with your partner. I'm going to tell you right now, these last episodes that I've recorded, what I've realized is a lot of these issues, my husband and I have gone, gone over in depth privately. And with this episode, I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. Like, what this looks like, how these mistakes, how my mistakes and his mistakes have impacted our marriage. And quite frankly, um, quite frankly, almost led to our demise. And so grab your husband. I want him to hear this episode because it is so good. So good that I've brought my husband on for the fifth and last time for this workbook. So, hey, babe, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's important that this is one of those episodes that you and your partner are going to want to listen to and you're going to want to do this together. If anything, this is the part where both of you are going to want to take part in this this activity. These exercises are like next level, right? Yes, they are. All right, so let's get down to it. Let's do it. So we're going to be completely open and raw today about a very, very sensitive topic. And it has to do with sex. (laughs) So I want to go ahead and just, just get to it. Here's why. For one, most of us, most of us women kind of shy away from this topic and we shy away for good reason. It's sort of taboo. And most of us don't like talking about it. And let's just be honest, there's insecurity surrounding sex. So the reason why I chose this topic as mistake number five is because not only is it really important, but it's something, it's a common mistake most of us women make. And I was back and forth about having my husband on. I kind of wanted to do it individually or solo, but then at the same time, I want you to understand the impact of withholding sex and using sex as a weapon, weaponizing sex as my husband termed it what it does to your marriage and why it's such a huge mistake that we have to end today. So babe, what's up? mistake number five, I won't have sex with him until he apologizes. I use sex as a weapon sometimes. Let's just go there. Like what has this been like in our relationship? Um, I think for one, Part of the problem is that people use sex and utilize sex as a means to fix their problem. Yeah. They think that it's going to cover up the problem and that the problem is just going to go away because now you had this great sex when it's just a Band-Aid. Yeah. How? So, I mean, I've never used sex as a weapon. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> used, so, let's go there. So, it's uh, – you've used sex as a weapon to get shit done okay um (laughs) to say no this has to get done first or i need you to help me with this first um things of that nature um but when it comes to problems no you you um the thing that you're great about is that you want to fix the issue for me it's i'm like well i'm tired of talking let's (laughs) let's get i'm now i'm just damn you look good right now (laughs) So looking, trying to look past it, wanting a, a quick remedy, thinking that that's the remedy. And I think that's part of the problem with couples is they try to use that as a way to fix their problem when all they're doing is masking it. So you're saying else. guys do this too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Guys will use sex as a weapon? Yes. Okay, so it's not just women. No, and I don't think it's being used as a weapon. I think it's being used as a band-aid to try to... to to think that that's what's going to fix the problem. The reason why I'm saying um, sex is being used as a weapon is like, if you don't apologize, Mm -hmm. well, then I have this control over you. I have this power over you. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. my body's the weapon where you get to use it or you don't. Yeah. But I think, I think men are more physical creatures in that aspect though. I think guys yearn for more passion and and Mm -hmm. things of that nature versus a, a woman is like, um, it's more, more of like the emotional connection, um, some of the other, the other parts of, of, uh, of that connection are, are expected from a woman versus just that physical touch and physical connection. Yeah, that's great and everything, but I think there's a, a lot more that's expected. Um, so for a woman, I think it's, it, it could be something that's more easily dismissed and be like, well, I, I can go without it. I'm fine. That's yeah. Uh, that's and, and a guy is like, well, no, I 
but I need I need this. Like <laughs> why? You do not understand. I need this. Why? Okay, come, 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 come. You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> so I I've been told, like working with men, mm. I'm not only told, but I've yeah. I've kind of seen it. Like sex is this very, very vulnerable state for men. A very mm-hmm. vulnerable state. One thing I've noticed, men don't say it. Like men don't outright say if my if my wife doesn't have sex with me, then I feel like she's not attracted to me. Men mm-hmm. don't say that. However, they'll go ahead and say it in different ways. Yeah. Like, you know, what am I doing wrong? You know, I'm I'm trying to go ahead and clean. I'm trying to go ahead and do all of the honey to do lists, and she still doesn't want to have sex with me. Like, I don't understand it. Yeah. Or she got me all hyped up and then fell asleep. Yeah. You know. How is it vulnerable for you guys? It's, it's used in... Okay, so this is how it's weaponized. Okay, I'm, glad then, you, I'm glad you said that stuff. This is how it's weaponized. Is it's used as a bribing tool to, yes. get, to get shit done. Yeah. It's it's a method of bribery. So it's like you're hanging that... You're dangling the carrot in front of the rabbit who's dying to, to get that damn carrot. And... Like I'm bringing it in just close enough. It's like that commercial. Oh, you almost got it. You almost got it. <laughs> and that's the woman. The dollar is the woman um, who's who's controlling it and or controlling the, the dollar being sex. The woman being the, the one with the, the, the fishing, fishing line. That's fishing it. Um, throwing it out there. And, you know, we're the damn idiot in the middle that's that's trying to catch it and, and is not not getting lucky. So um, what's that feel it, like when we do that to you guys? Um, it's humiliating and it makes us less attracted to or less um, likely to even pursue it some other time or we end up going where we're like, you know what, screw this. I'm not going to do it either. Yeah. Um, and then when the moment comes where the woman and the roles are reversed and she's like trying to apologize and trying to make up and saying, okay, well then... Okay, I'll give you a little bit, and at that at that time, it's already you're fed up. And you know, it's like, nah, get away. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this anymore. And then that becomes, and then it becomes an even bigger issue because now it's not just more, not about those other things. And you know, maybe you're understanding your woman's um, or your spouse's love language, and you're doing all those things, and you're like, what more do I need to do to yeah. to try to get your attention, to try to get some intimacy, to try to get to catch a moment. You know, I'm doing all these things and, and yet, you know, you're adding more and more to your damn list that you yep. want done. I'm doing it all, but you're not paying up. Yeah. And, you know, and, and after a while it just becomes old and, you know, I, I think that's why you get some, some situations where, um, if needs aren't met, that's when. You know, you end up with with issues uh, amongst a couple, and uh, whether it's um, pornography or themselves or others, um, because they're just they're unhappy with uh, the way that things are going. Yeah, I'm glad you brought all of those things up because I don't think we realize when we use sex as a weapon, or when we say, "Well, I'm not going to have sex with you until I, you apologize," or "I'm not going to have sex with you until you do this." What we don't realize is we're also pushing you away mm-hmm. and we're now setting this as the pattern for the relationship. And don't get me wrong, ladies, if you're mad, obviously that's not the time you're going to want to have sex. Like, and that's cool. Like you get to say no, you get to go ahead and communicate that like, nope, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not feeling it, you know, or I'm not in the mood or whatever the hell it is. Like, but to use it as a weapon that's that right there. Like when you're threatening it, that right there is what puts the, puts the relationship in a bit of a crisis. So let's, let's talk about like, let's say I don't want to have sex because I'm upset with you. Mm-hmm. Like, where are you at? Because I want to make sure then with your man's perspective. Then I think you should say that. Yeah. I don't want to have sex because I'm upset with you. I, I don't want to fix. I don't want to, I don't want, us to look past this and think that this is going to fix it because it's not we need to fix this first yeah i i love sex too and i want to have sex with you as well however i don't know if i'm pissed off at you i don't know if i'm gonna be saying all that i don't know if i'm gonna be like listen uh, i love sex no yeah i just need you to apologize i'm uh, what i'm probably you're probably right (laughs) but i think that if that's a problem where that's often the solution Uh, and it's something that's always 
considered and and that's the we well we do that all the time because that's over and meanwhile there's resentment there's this this hangover of this problem the yeah. very next day you're still waking up you're bitter you're you're pissed off you don't know why and then you start to think about it and you're like no i'm still mad about what our issue was last night or yesterday or a few hours ago we had amazing sex but this problem is still here yeah. it wasn't fixed so i think when you start to realize that that is the issue and you realize that this is not the the the, the fix it for all mm-hmm. you have to go back to okay this is the basic thing yeah fix this first let's deal with the problem come to some type of solution figure out what the root cause of it all, all was be accountable for whoever caused it or or did it take responsibility and then move past it and move on um, and then if that becomes a result of the makeup, then great. Then it's even better. Yeah, I agree with that. So I think another big thing that we need to go ahead and address is not only are we attempting to punish you by withholding sex, but we're also punishing ourselves. How so? Well, we're punishing ourselves because not only are we now doing this back and forth thing of using sex as a weapon, but when we do want to be intimate with you, We've already created this dysfunctional pattern of this is what it looks like. You have to do this in order for me to have sex with you. Or you have to go ahead and fake apologize in order for me to have sex with you. And so when it really comes time for us to be intimate, it's not there. It's not there because it's been set up to be this chore, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think women need to know the most about weaponizing sex? Sex to me is a... It sh- it should be something that is shared amongst the two of you. That it's um, it's not just used as a as a way of uh, one. It's not a way of fixing things. Um, it like, should be sought out and, yeah. and looked at as something that's like it's special. Um, but what is one thing we don't know? Like, what is one thing that's like? What is my man not telling me about the importance of sex? Um, what are you say, not telling me uh, about the importance of sex? I would, no, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything that's not important. I, I think there's, I mean, it, to me, it is important in a, in a relationship. It's for me, it, it's a big thing. I mean, you, you know, we've already done this love language stuff before. And for me, it's intimacy and, and touch and all that stuff. So to me, that's a big part of my love language. You've also but said, I'll, but I'll, but I'll also say that the, I like the connection. I like the, but, but. In addition to that connection, I also like the spontaneity, like the out of this world, catch me by surprise type moment. And mm-hmm. those are, are important as well in a relationship where it's not just like, okay, I'm coming home from work. I already know I'm going to be met with this, this, and this because it's it's a repetition, it's a repetitious cycle that goes on and it's something that I'm used to seeing. So I already know I'm going to be met with as soon as I get home. The house is going to be in disarray, and this is just, I'm not saying in our own life, um, but the house is going to be in disarray. I'm going to be met with, you know, I got to get this done. I got to get that done. I've just had a long day at work, and um, we're probably not going to have sex. We may have dinner, um, and then after that, then it's, you know, to bed, and the, and the day repeats. So there's already the disappointment that, the, that maybe the husband um, or man feels like they're, they're walking into. When... Instead, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Love Jones. Like we were just meet, talking about this right now before your, we started uh, recording. Meet your meet your man at the door, and hell, don't even say a word, and just start going to, you know, <laughs> going at it, <laughs> you know, and just catch him by surprise every now and then. And like he's probably going to say, you know, what did I do to deserve this? An appreciation for what their role is in the household for one um, would be great because I think that's a a big part of it too is that there's just a lack of appreciation for your partner and then you're using this thing that is so powerful to hang over their head and just say that you know I'm not gonna we're not gonna do it until I'm ready to do it and I think if you're do you think women have more control in that regard yes Really? You think yeah. women have more control on sex? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A, a guy ain't withholding that shit. <laughs> Hell no. 
So, so women hold the power. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Baby, you think I hold the power? Yeah. I mean, I do. Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so. You, you hold the power in that being started to begin with. Like, if you've ever seen the movie, what was it? Um, the one about something 40, something about 40, um, or here's 40 or something like that. And then she says at the beginning of the movie, He's like, hey, you want to have sex? She's like, uh, I'm constipated right now. Yeah, that's like – those are those types of excuses and things that will, you know, turn a moment that could be great into like, all right, moment's lost. That's it. Yeah. Those are some of those things that are said to like quickly get out of the mood or for a woman to be able to escape out of something that she doesn't want to do even though the man wants to do that. And maybe he's in, in the moment, but it's some of those things that maybe are said like I'm constipated – I just started it, um, you know, or I hear, to, I hear the kids period. or yeah, referring to period, um, or I hear the kids, I got to go check on them. Or I think I left it, you know, avoidance is what it all ultimately boils down to. Yeah. So you said two things that I think we need to touch on. One, men need to pre- feel appreciated too. Yeah. I, I don't, I think we get so caught up in doing everything you know, as we said in mistake number one and, you know, the other mistakes that we, we that we do that we put on ourselves, we get so caught up in everything we're doing, we forget all the things you do. And so I appreciate that you just said that men also want to feel appreciated. And, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to go ahead and bend over backwards all the time. Oh, well, that would be great, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. The other thing you just said was about... Um, like that spontaneity, yeah. that spontaneity and, you know, women holding the power. Um, I don't think we realize that. And maybe we do. That's why we use it as a weapon, but I don't really, couples don't talk about this. Like we, a lot of couples, even the couples I work with, they don't, I, I challenge them to have these mm-hmm. conversations, but if I don't challenge them, then they're never having these discussions and so I would, I would challenge you guys as an added bonus to this workbook, I would challenge you to go out and have a discussion, you know, with your husband on what this looks like all together and, you know, how, how withholding sex, using sex as weapon, how it's impacted your marriage. I wanted to go ahead and touch on one more thing and I just forgot to say tip of my tongue. Um, you mentioned guys will never say no. But you also mentioned earlier that if we continue to go ahead and use it as a weapon and we'll do this first and, well, you haven't done this first, then there is a point where they will. They yeah. will say no. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's like, I would say the point of no return, but that's when you know shit is bad. Yeah. In, in my opinion, like that should be a, a, a big indicator to you that your relationship is, especially if, if in the relationship – one person is pursuing it more than the other constantly. And now all of a sudden they're like, no, I don't want anything to do with you. That should be like, holy crap. Like I, I, I've taken this too far. So that can happen Mm -hmm. no matter how much the husband loves. Yep. And is fighting themselves to, to not give in. What do you mean? Tell Um, me more. What do you mean? Fighting himself? Fighting the urge. Cause it's great. But at the same time, too, like they get your partner, your partner, you're you're fed up, and you're just like, I I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. This it's fake right now. Um, the sex will be great, but then I have to go no, out the with sex this. Will be, next the time. sex will be like it's it's a quickie at, at best. So you guys already have that in your head. And you're checked out too. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. I love that you said that. See that right there. That is what husbands don't tell wives. Yeah. They don't tell wives. They don't like, ever yeah, talk. I'll do it, but I'm going to do it all for me because I'm going to, right now, I'm going to do this as, I'm going to get my, my, my end of this out and climax and I'm done. That's it. So you wanted it, you got it, but it's all about me right now. It's not, not even about you. I'm not, yeah. I'm not connecting with you. I'm not doing anything. It's going to be in and out. That's yeah. it. As long as I get mine. Yeah. And so I'm glad you said that because a lot of men, a lot of men, they'll go ahead and, and again, women too, women too will go to the point of no return. I think women will go to the point of no return with household chores, mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. with going ahead and doing everything for the, the family, everything for the kids, you know, all of the to do just to do tasks. Right. And then mm-hmm. we'll complain, we'll complain, we'll complain over and over and over again. I need your help. I need more support. I need you to start making decisions. And then we'll go to this place of, I can't do this shit anymore. I'm tired. I've already asked for your help 50,000 times and you're not helping me or you're not doing it right. Or, you know, and we have faults in that. We have a whole bunch of faults in that. Cause oh, yeah. when we ask for help, we complain. So there's, there's faults in that, but I, I just want to go ahead and, and do a little bit of a comparison. We go to the point of no return when we're doing all of those things. Mm-hmm. It sounds like men go to the point of no return when sex is involved. So sex is really big. Mm hmm. Sex is really, really big. I don't, I I mean, I know we know, but it's like, oh, this is just something you want from me. That's not true though. It's not something you want from me. And that's why I said sex is really vulnerable, a vulnerable, um, a sensitive issue for men. Because I know for you, there's been times when, um, we didn't have it for a while and you had asked me, are you attracted to me? And I was like, where, where the, what, where the hell did this come from? And you're like, well, we haven't had sex. And it's like, wait a minute. So you, you determine my level of attraction for you based off of. So I've totally been into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like that moment when you and I had that discussion, gosh, that was a couple of years ago. Um, I think you were still in the, in the Marine Corps when mm-hmm. we had that discussion, mm-hmm. but that discussion was like, oh shit. I didn't know that. I had never known that, you know, that that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but It sounds like that's the reason why sex is so big because it's your form of validation. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Can you speak more to that? No, I was just going to say, yeah, it it validates our, your, it's our gauge on whether or not you're attracted to us um, because then there's that connection. And if it's like in the moment, there's a lack of connection, there's a lack of, any type of like involvement and you're just like a dead fish, then that to us is an indication of like, okay, she, it's gotta do, it's gotta, it's gotta be me. Yeah. I, it's got, I gotta be the reason why she's not into this right now. Um, so then you start doubting yourself and you start having your own, I mean, there's our own insecurities and things of that nature, not knowing what the hell the whole reason is that the, for the lack of connection, it, it could be, you know, worry about, you know, financially, uh, financial things that are, that are, um, causing worries. It could be issues with the kids and problems that the kids are going through. It could be, it could be a number of things, but I would say for the guy, you look at like, shit, is she even, you know, it's a moment that her and I are here mm-hmm. and I'm just looking at here and now. Oh, uh, gotcha. gotcha. So if there's no like connection, there's not like, you know, the same type of, emotion the guy is is showing mm-hmm. um or the one partner is showing and the other is not then immediately it's about it, it it becomes about well this is this is obviously it's all about me it's gotcha i want to go ahead and circle back real quick on the dead fish comment that you just made mm-hmm. um i like i i appreciate it because i think we i think you guys need to hear it i'm just gonna i'm gonna just be point blank i think you guys need to hear it so what do you mean by that? Is Are you referring to like us just saying, okay, fine, we'll have sex with you when we really don't want to and we're not an active... Not, no active role in it. Gotcha. Just laying there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're not happy that you're getting it? Uh, I I am in some regard happy that I'm, that I'm getting it, but at the same time too, um, I'm disappointed in the fact that like this is the quality I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not as, it's not as pleasing. Yeah. Gotcha. I want a steak. I'm getting McDonald's. <laughs> I think you just, I want a steak and I'm at McDonald's. Yeah. I want a steak, but I'm at, I'm getting McDonald's. right oh, now. Oh, okay. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that really sucks. Yeah, I ain't even getting a Big Mac. <laughs> I can't even fucking supersize it. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. It's the quality of what I'm, what I'm getting right now. Uh, so we're referring to, um, lesson five in our workbook too. So 
we're not necessarily following the script because I want to make sure that you guys are able to use this as a guide, right? So I want you guys to get a male's perspective. Hell, I want you guys to go ahead and open up conversations with this about your husband. But I'm going to go ahead and answer some of the questions that are in this workbook. And I'm, I'm a little nervous because, like I said, I'm going to be open and raw. And my husband and I had a conversation about this before we started recording that, honey, don't hold back. Even if it feels like you're throwing me under the bus, like, let's just go. Let's just go for it. Because sex is big in a relationship. And once you take the fun out of it, yeah, it's very hard to come back from that. It is very, very hard to come back from that. So here we go. Mom, I hope you're not listening, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First question is, um, with, with regard to taking action, is when was the last time you had sex? And the follow-on question after that oh, was, shit. like, really good sex. Two days ago. Was it two days yes, ago or was it, it was. yesterday? That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. All right. Calm down, mom. Earmuffs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, when Willie and I have sex, it is very important that I am in it. I am in it. Obviously, I'm in it to win it. However, when I say I'm in it, it's like I'm not holding back at all. Like, I don't give a shit if the lights are on, lights are off, don't care. I don't care if he's looking at me completely naked. Obviously, we're having sex, so that's kind of a part of it, ladies. So if you're not getting naked, get naked. He is excited. He's excited to see you. He's excited that you picked him. He doesn't give a shit if you gain 5, 10, 15 pounds. He doesn't care. He's just happy you picked him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, get comfortable <laughs> being uncomfortable. Get comfortable with yourself. Um, enjoy your sensuality, no matter how what size you are today and where you were like, it shouldn't be about that. Just enjoy the moment. Be all in. Uh, be- I got to ask this. I don't want to, because yeah. I'm like nervous about who's listening. Okay. And at the same time, I said, let's just be raw and open. Yeah. So what, what do you love or what arouses you the most about me when we're having sex? Your confidence, your confidence, your sensuality. Um, you didn't even hesitate. No, nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Um, openness and willingness to to just be spot uh, spontaneous and just explore anything and everything because I mean that's the way our relationship is in in regards to this mm-hmm. is that we're willing to try new things and to me if you want longevity in your relationship and this to be a big part of it which should be a big part of it if you've only been doing it in one of two ways her on top or you on top you need to explore some more. Um, try some new things. It, it'll it'll rock your world. It'll rock your relationship, and just create some new, some new and fun things ab- about each other that you didn't already know. And I think for us, that's a big part of our relationship. Is I mean, that's that's something that we've we've done, and mm-hmm. it's, it's great. <laughs> Get a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Number two. Identify why you use sex as a weapon to grab his attention, punish, or something else. How often have, how often do you do you threaten him? So there's three parts to this. So why do I use sex as a weapon? Um, oh God, I hate to admit this, but I every now and then will use sex as a weapon, and it's to get what I want. It's I know if I go ahead and say, hey, if I da- if I dingle, you know. Mm-hmm. That, that, whatever. The dollar, the carrot, whatever. Yeah, if yeah. I dangle the carrot, dangle the carrot, dingle. Dangle, if I dangle the carrot, <laughs> that you'll go ahead and comply. Like, right away, it's kind of like, you know, somebody's busy doing something, and all of a sudden, when I say, we'll have sex, your ears perk up. It's like, huh? That's a squirrel moment right there. <laughs> Definitely a squirrel moment every time. And so it's like, I am I know I'm going to get what I want. And I hate to say that because... Right now, when I say that, it's like, damn, dude, why would I do that to you? Why would I manipulate you? And that, mm-hmm. that's ultimately yes. what I'm doing. Yeah. Why would I manipulate you? So when you're answering these questions, I want you to write that down. I want you to be able to identify like what you're doing. So that's the second part of this question is what what is the reason why you're doing it? Is it you're using it? And I'll add this to that list. But is it attention? Is it for punishment? Or is it something else? And this something else, obviously the word that she just used right now, manipulation. Yeah. So are you using it to manipulate your partner? If so, I, I caution against it. 
Um, and then the last thing, the last part of this question is how often do you, do you threaten him? Uh, you know what? I, I don't think I threaten you that often. I think it's maybe, maybe once a month. I don't think I threaten you often with sex. You think I, no, I, what, what, shit, we're being honest here. Do you think I threaten you often with sex? Uh, Like I'm thinking like, when's the last time I threatened you? I never, I haven't threatened you. No, you you haven't. No, No, it's been a while. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, well, I'm not going to have sex. I, you know what? No, I don't. I can't even say once a month. I No. I never say, hey, well, you know, fine. I'm not going to have sex with you. I mean, there's times where I'm playing with you, but that's because we're about to have sex. And I'll say, nope, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to enjoy it. Or I'll play yeah. around like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't think there's been a time where I've said, well, I said, I'm, nope, I'm not going to have sex with you then. Yeah. And, and there's not times where you're disconnected in, in the moment. No, I'm in it. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I will say that there are times, there have been times where I have bribed you. I think that's, for me, that would be a better question. That would be the, how you're using it as a weapon. Yeah. So I think there are times that I have bribed you for, um, to go ahead and complete tasks, but I don't think. Last episode. Okay, fine, (laughs) fine. So go ahead and tell them, tell them. All right. So here we go. Part of the bribing. And I don't know if you caught the last episode, but. With her and I. Episode she, 50. Episode she had, 50. She had said, if you do this with me, and mind you, it was late at night. I had to get up really early in the morning, and she says, I really need to do this. I, we really need to record together. And we had been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Finally, she was like, let's just do it. The kids are in bed. And I'm like, uh, I'm tired. And she goes, I promise you, we'll have, I'll, we'll have sex. Like I'll, rock good. Your, I'll rock your world after we're done. And she goes, I, I promise you, we'll have it. And what happens? No, nah, that <laughs> shit didn't happen. I was so damn tired afterwards. I, I was like, so you were part of happen. it. You were I'm part going, of I'm it. I'm taking my ass to bed. Yeah, but you were part of the reason. But why. what could have happened is it could have been <laughs> stop recording, done, close the screen, jump my bones right there. Like, I didn't even have a chance to walk away. That's how, how it should have been. <laughs> that's how but you had it in your head. That's how I had it in my head. I was looking forward to it. And then I was like, waited a few seconds. That shit didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so yeah, that's that's how that's how it gets used. Bribery, right there. That's how she uses it. Bribing my ass, get it every time too. Sucker. Um, do you feel? Do you feel sexy? And that's a question for not just one partner. That's that's for both of you. Do you feel sexy? Because I think um, there's insecurities for for both of us. I mean, hell, we've been in, in quarantine for quite some time, and there's been people that have been like, you know, I, th- I threw on this quarantine weight, mm-hmm. um, you know, labeling it. So, um, do you feel sexy? Stop focusing on body flaws and instead focus on what feels pleasurable. List your insecurities below. So that's really big. Number three, when you guys are, are, are filling out this workbook, that is huge. Do you feel sexy? Yeah. And be honest. Yeah. I'd probably do this. I would say do this together. Use two different color pens and just put down, you know, what each of your responses Mm -hmm. are and write them down. So that way, one, it'll make the the other partner aware of what your partner's insecurities are so because maybe you didn't even know yeah you're you're totally off in left field and you thought it was this when it's actually something else and yeah. you know so ladies yeah that's you know what, that's is, a great idea yeah. this is i don't know why i didn't think about that to begin with this workbook you can totally do with your partner mm-hmm. you can t- you can do it on your own or you can do it with your partner, but it's it's really a form of self discovery. Yeah. So to answer your question, do you feel sexy? Yeah, I do. And a big part is the amount of work that I've done on my confidence and my sense of self worth. And then in addition to that, I think because I am so confident, I don't mean to sound cocky. Well, you know, I'm not even gonna apologize. I'm gonna be unapologetic about my how confident I am. I feel like because I'm so confident, not only does that raise up your level of attraction with me because I feel confident even with the way I look right now and haven't mm. brushed my hair. I just brushed my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> my hair is all kinds of crazy. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. So, and and I'm still in pajamas and I'll have a bra on. Like it's just and with slippers. Like I don't even think I have a bra on. I'm just being honest. Like this is what it looks like right now. We just woke up. <laughs> but and I was just like pulling eye mocos from my from my eyes. But I feel sexy. I feel sexy no matter what. And I think that attracts you even more to me yeah right Mm -hmm. and so the other part of the question is um stop focusing on body flaws if you are in your head 
about your body flaws, guess what? Your husband knows it and he's put off by it. It's just, it's not something pleasing and appeasing, like at all. Yeah. From, you know, guys put aside your, your, your dad bod and, you know, beer belly or whatever it is that you're insecure about or. You know, I haven't been to the gym in uh, over a year now because of this. this yeah, if we're having sex with you, we don't stuff. care about that. Like, get out of your damn head. Be in the moment. Like, yeah. Just, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, number four, how often would you like to have sex and have a discussion with your partner and, you know, see how it goes? So for me, I think this is different from you. Mm-hmm. For me, I like when we have it. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's great. And it's like, oh my God, why don't we do this every day? Like we should do this every single day, right? I agree. agree. (laughs) However, at the same time, like, it's like, holy moly, like we have to, we would do this every day. And so there are times when at the end of the night, it's like, I'm like out, I'm like out cold. And so trying to go ahead and be realistic about it. And so for me... I would like to have it, and this, I think you're going to like look at me with like crazy eyes right now, but I would like to have it four times a week. If we had it four times a week, that'd be awesome. Okay. Like, I'd be walking around like, freaking I own the world. Straight as shit. Straight my shit. <laughs> what about you? How many times, how often would you like how to? How often you eat? <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat that? I don't think they heard that. I said, how often do you, do you eat? <laughs> so three times a day. <laughs> four <laughs> times a day. <laughs> No, be honest. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I want to smash like when I wake up, before I go to bed, a nooner. Hell yeah. So what I'm thinking about right now is my sound engineer, Mitch, listening to this thing because he's like totally cool guy, Z- listening to this and going, fuck yeah, I'm with him. I'm with <laughs> Willie. Mitch, if you're thinking this, you got to text me when you hear this. All right. And I want to know how many, how often you'd like to with your partner. <laughs> Ladies, you know what? Screw it. I want you to go ahead and you don't have to say anything, but just tag me in your stories with a number. Like just Instagram, Facebook, tag me. Empowered and unapologetic. Mistake number five, question number four. Yeah. Mis- and then throw your number out. Boom. Yes. Tag me. Tag me. I want I want to get a tally on this. <laughs> All right. Next question. Explore. And this is the final, final question here. Explore each other's bodies. Set up a date and surprise them. Be creative and develop your plan below. Yes. How, how we've explored each other's bodies oh, yeah. often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that like for me, when I get to explore your body, not only am I seeing you in this crazy vulnerable state, but it's like the fact that you are allowing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, obviously that we both have insecurities. That, yeah. That goes with putting your insecurities aside, being in the moment. And also like finally once um, showing that you have a, a bit of confidence in your, your partner's ability to explore your body and you being comfortable with, with yourself too. Yeah. So that's part of it. Um, and that's part of the, the, the previously lead, the questions that led up to this, this one too, here too is, understanding your own insecurities being comfortable with those insecurities um and just you know enjoying that that moment right there where you're able to explore openly explore each other yeah um, and surprise each other um so i i agree i think on both ends not only that but it also develops this level of confidence in the relationship so Mm -hmm. with the way i define confidence is trust you know it's it's this it's this great amount of trust and so if I'm allowing you to explore my body, for one, that requires a great amount of vulnerability. I think with women, we're so much more insecure than men. I might be 100% wrong because mm-hmm. you and I have talked about our insecurities and been open about it. But like, it's like, holy shit, he's going to see my belly fat. He's going to see my scars. He's going to see stretch marks. He's going to see cellulite, you know, because we have more cellulite than men. I hate mm-hmm. that. I hate that. But that's just the truth. I'm like, Like thinking about all of those things. And there's times in the beginning, I remember, you know, in the relationship where it was like, I had to go out and position myself a certain way because I thought that was more attractive. Not knowing like I was a robot during those times. Like, okay, that's stupid because you can't hold that position for too long, you know? And, And what I realized is when I allow you to explore my body, there's this great amount of trust. And then I actually get to see firsthand how you care for it 
and how gentle you are. And it's like, I'm kind of like want to cry right now because it's like so true. Like I get to see it right in front of me versus all of the things that we drop in our heads because we make you guys out to be monsters. We make you out to be like, well, I'm just a piece of meat to him. That's not fucking true. That's not true at all. And if it, if that's the sex life, then obviously you need to communicate, whether it's in the moment, before the moment, or conversations that are just about sex. Yeah. You need to have those conversations because if you don't want to have blah, it's all about one person, one-sided sex, well, then have that conversation. Have that uncomfortable conversation about it. Yeah, and I want you guys – I'm going to challenge you here. You're a part of that. If you feel like you're a piece of meat – in the relationship, don't get me wrong. If there's abuse, if there's some form of rape, that's, that's not what I'm commenting on. I am not talking about that. What I am talking about is if you've set up the relationship where, yeah, you're consenting to sex and you're just like, mm, you're allowing your insecurities to get in the way. You're just laying there. You're pretending like you got pleasure. I'm going to tell you right now, you just set your ass up for failure. You set your ass up for failure. And there's it's nobody else's fault but your own. However, if you have, and this is in a healthy relationship where it's consensual. Now, go ahead and step outside of your comfort zone and do something different. Because like, like what you just said, babe, it, it enhances the relationship and it doesn't set the relationship up for failure. Right? Mm -hmm. This episode is like so freaking good. And it's like brought up so many ideas because it's like, holy shit, like, ladies, I want you to go ahead and work on this workbook with your husband. Like if you're just starting out with us, if um, if you don't even have the workbook, download it. www.empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash episode 51. It's a free copy for you. You can use this with your, um, you can go ahead and use this and work on it with your husband. You can go ahead and share it with a friend. Give them the link. Share it with a friend. This is so important. Babe, I got to say thank you so much for being on this episode. Well, thank this you for was having me on. Absolutely. I enjoyed this a lot. Right? This was yeah. fun. This was so much fun. It was kind of like me and you having a conversation, yeah. but for like the world to hear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. Again, I want you guys to share with me your thoughts and um, your experiences. Love you. Bye. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now and rate and review. Thank you, guys. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I know you're ready for the next steps. If you want to become empowered and unapologetic, get my free course, Unapologetically Me, over at empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash course. Empowered and Unapologetic is part of the Practice of the Practice Podcast Network, a family of podcasts that change the world. To hear other podcasts like the Bomb Mom Podcast, Beta Male Revolution, or Imperfect Thriving, go to practiceofthepractice.com forward slash network. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host, practice of the practice, or the guest are providing legal, mental health, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. 
If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking. 24 7 why we have no off switch and why we crave alcohol if you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is then i hope that you will check out the sober powered podcast new episodes every friday see you there i know i know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol i know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything and I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. 
If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there.